Welcome to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Listen and learn what the wealthiest Americans are doing with their money and time that's different from the middle class. Learn the roadmap to financial and personal success that includes family, fitness, romance, charity, and all the parts of a balanced life. Now, here's your host, real estate investor and mentor, Steve Davis. Hello and welcome to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I am your host, Steve Davis, where as always, we're here working hard to improve our financial IQ, our financial literacy, uh, for the simple reason that high school and college do nothing to teach us how to build wealth. They're there to teach us how to get a job, and that's about it. It's our responsibility as individuals and families to study the rules of gold, the rules of money, and learn how to build wealth on our own. And this has really been since around 1974. You know, before that, what you did was you worked for a company for 45 years and then you got a pension that was pretty close to what you were making when you were working. But those disappeared around 1974. And what they did, they created the IRA and the 401k and they said, hey, Americans, guess what? No more pensions. You're responsible for your own retirement. And by the way, we're not going to put any classes in high school or college to teach you how to be responsible for your own retirement. (laughs) Which is probably a good thing because it's been said that the government solution to a problem is most times as bad as the problem. So I'm actually glad that the government didn't try to teach me how to build wealth through high school or college because it it wouldn't have been effective. It would have been the wrong map, just like they give the wrong map to everyone, Um, the map of save your way to retirement, retire and live off your savings. The the map they gave us results in 95% of Americans failing to retire by age 65. I mean, you think about that. 95% of Americans can't retire at age 65, or if they do, they have to reduce their quality of lifestyle dramatically just to survive. That's not a successful retirement. A successful retirement is a retirement where you continue to make money you make the I I think the easiest way to put it is you should be making the same amount of money when you retire as you were when you were working minus your earned income what do I mean by that if you look at the 5% of Americans who do retire successfully what they have done is gone out and invested in income producing assets, businesses and primarily real estate, nine out of 10 of them used real estate to build a second stream of income that meets all their needs and wants. So let's say somebody makes 10 grand a month at their job. Well, these 5% are making 10 grand a month passively as well and many of them much, much, much more than that. So when they retire, yeah, they lose the 10 grand a month from their earned income, but they've still got the 10, 15, 20 grand a month from their second stream of income, their passive income stream. And so many people are worried about investing in real estate thinking it takes a lot of time. I'm talking about these are passive income streams. Passive. It's just as passive as a good stock market investor. A good one. What do I mean by that? A good stock market investor does research. You know, they know who the CEO is, who the CFO is. They know their history. They know They study before they ever invest in a stock. 
Now, I think it's futile. I don't think it's effective, but that's the definition of a good stock investor. So in other words, when you're a passive investor in real estate, you do have to take some classes. You do have to know how to read a P&L profit and loss statement. You do need to know how to underwrite or evaluate the deals that you're looking at. But it's still passive. I don't think I ever spent more than two to three hours studying a passive investment before I invested in it. Then after I invested in it, I did nothing but read a financial statement once a quarter. And I got to be honest with you, I don't even read them once a quarter unless they're having difficulty. If they're having trouble, which fortunately has only been a few deals over my 35 years, then I look at the financial statement and see if I can help or whatever. But this is a passive investment. And when they retire, they're not working. Yet their quality of lifestyle remains the same. That's the power of building a second stream of income. The other power behind it is the fact that you don't know how long you're going to live. And when you build a second stream of income, that income comes in whether you live 10 years in retirement or 50 years in retirement, it doesn't matter. But if you try to save your way to retirement, you're literally praying that you die before you run out of money. It's a stressed, harsh reality. But if you try to save your way to retirement, you're going to be praying to your God. Dear God, kill me before I run out of money. <laughs> Not a good way to live. So building a second stream of income solves every financial problem that Americans are having today. But let me ask you this. How many of you were told in high school or college to build a second stream of income? You weren't. How many of you had parents that told you to build a second stream of income? Almost none of you, unless your parents were rich. The rich teach their kids differently than the poor and middle class. The rich are teaching their children by income producing assets. The rich are not, I know this is, people are going to lose their minds. The rich are not teaching their kids to buy stocks. The stock market average for the last 75 years is 7%. You think a rich person is going to be satisfied with a 7% rate of return? They're not. They're buying syndications where they make 20, 22, 28% rate of return. And that is life changing. When you make three to four times as much money as the poor and middle class who have their money in the stock market, that's why they're getting rich. Okay, we got to go to break. When we come back, we're going to talk about something which may seem odd at first, but if you'll bear with me, we're going to talk about the brain-mind disconnect, how they are two different things. This is the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Thanks for listening. If you have money in an IRA, 401k, or other retirement account, you can use it to invest passively in real estate without tax or penalty. Our average rate of return is three times that of the stock market and mutual funds with much less volatility. If you have over $70,000, you can start passive investing today. Please attend our free sample class to learn more. Go to TotalWealthAcademy.com. That's TotalWealthAcademy.com for reservations. Thank you. Welcome back to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I am your host, Steve Davis, and I want to talk about something that, like I said at the end of the last segment, may seem odd, but it's really not. 
it actually is something that changed my life dramatically when I started looking at myself this way. Now, many of you have read this. If you took psychology courses in college, you probably heard this. But what effective people do is they look at their head, they look at their brain, and they look at their mind. In other words, all of that's in the same place in your head, right? But what you have to do is make a distinction that they are two different things. Your brain and your mind are two different things. You've got to make this distinction to be effective at controlling your brain. The simplest way to put it is you want to think of your brain as everything you knew the day you were born. And believe it or not, your brain has massive amounts of information. Did you know that there are a trillion different operations going on in your body every second? A trillion. Your brain knows how to ask for help. Your brain knows how to express fear. Your brain knows how to find food. Your brain knows to be afraid of certain things. Your brain has massive amounts of knowledge the day you're born. So think of your brain, again, as everything you knew when you were born. And you want to differentiate it from your mind which is everything you've learned since you were born. See how they become two different things? Your mind is not physical. It can't be touched. Your brain is physical. It can be touched. Your mind is everything you've learned since birth. Now, I'm going to say something that you've got to bear with me on. I will explain it. I consider my brain my mortal enemy. My brain is my enemy. See, the brain works primarily on instinct. The brain has a goal. Survive. Reproduce and survive. And that's about it. Your mind, on the other hand, is different. Your mind is what wants to excel. It doesn't want to survive. It wants to thrive. It wants to achieve. It wants to push forward, set goals, leave a legacy. That's all your mind. So your brain just wants to survive. And here's why I consider my brain my enemy. We have effort and risk minimizing brains. We evolved or were created with effort and risk minimizing brains. We want to reduce effort. We don't want to do anything. And we want to reduce risk. Some of you have figured out already why I consider my brain my enemy. We have an effort and risk minimizing brain. What are the two things you have to do to succeed? You have to put out massive effort and take risk. Do you see the disconnect? Effort and risk minimizing brain yet effort and risk are required to succeed. See the problem? And when you look at 95% of Americans failing, and by the way, this is not a new statistic. I heard this the other day from Earl Nightingale from the 1920s. Even in the 1920s, the statistics were the same. 95% of Americans were failing financially. This is nothing new. And 
It's because the average person listens to their brain. See, your brain just wants to do enough to get by. It just wants to survive, not thrive, not excel, not achieve. It just wants to get by. There's your instinct. Effort and risk minimizing brain. So, a, a, a good example is this. Many of you have said for weeks, months, some of you years, some of you decades, you've listened to me. And your mind has said, man, go take that free sample class. Let's see what he's doing. See if it'd be beneficial. It's an hour and a half class. Not a big, not a big effort. No risk. But when your mind says that, your brain begins to downplay it. Your brain goes, oh, could be risky. Could be a scam. Oh, there's a, there's a baseball game on that night. It's an important baseball game. Or the fence fell over in the hurricane. You haven't fixed that yet. You need to fix that that night. See, whenever your mind tries to do something positive, your brain throws up all kinds of barriers. It's not the right time. It could be a scam. There's other more important things. It's too risky. It's too much effort. One of the, my, and it's a sad example, but I have, let's say I'm teaching a Saturday class and there's 70 people reserved. Did you know that only 40 or 45 of them are going to show? Now think about it. 70 people came to the free sample class, liked what they saw, made a decision to change their lives financially, paid $500, and still didn't make it to the class. What happened to them? Where are those other 25 people? Their brain got them. They woke up Saturday morning and they said, all right, I'm going to go take this class. I'm going to change my life. But the brain started talking. Well, it's early. You're still a little tired. You don't feel so good. There's an important football game or baseball game on today. You need to prepare that fence. You need to get the cars washed. Do you see what the brain does to you? It gives you all kinds of excuses so that you don't exert effort or take risk. It's designed that way and for good reason. 10,000 years ago, but in today's world, the effort and risk minimizing brain is not a benefit. It's a hindrance. It's holding you back. I want you to think about this, and this can be very painful, but I want you to be hard on yourself. Please. Have you ever lived paycheck to paycheck? You're doing just enough to get by. That's your brain. You're listening to your brain instead of your mind. You don't want to hustle. You don't want to work harder. You don't want to change. You just want to get by. Living paycheck to paycheck is an example of listening to your brain instead of listening to your mind and doing just enough to get by by. That doesn't work. As you can see, you're living paycheck to paycheck. It doesn't work. You got to hustle. 
you got to do more than just go to a job every day. You know, I love the Monopoly analogy. If you play Monopoly and all you do is circle the board and collect your paycheck at go, would you ever win the game? The answer is no. To win the game of Monopoly, what do you have to do? You have to circle the board, collect your paycheck, and buy income producing assets like utilities, railroads, and primarily real estate. You've got to. See, your mind wants to thrive. It wants to excel. It's your mind that wants the Ferrari. It wants to take the family to Europe for a month. Not your brain. It's your mind. And what you've got to do is differentiate the two. And this works, I'm telling you. Whenever I see myself failing, getting lazy, not completing my tasks, or procrastinating, I can always track it back to I'm listening to my brain instead of my mind. You want to start listening to your mind and get out of that paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. Stop doing just enough to get by. Hustle. All right, we'll talk more after the break here on the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Thanks for listening. When you put money in the bank or pay your insurance premium, they take that money and go buy real estate with it. Why? Because it gives the highest rate of return and is the lowest risk. This is called passive investing. Due to some recent changes in the laws, you can now invest the exact same way. Total Wealth Academy can show you how. Visit TotalWealthAcademy.com and attend our free sample class on real estate investing. That's TotalWealthAcademy.com. Thank you. Welcome back to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I am your host, Steve Davis, and we've just finished a conversation, a simple analysis of the difference between your brain and your mind. Remember, your brain is everything that you knew when you were born. Your mind is everything you've learned since you were born. Your brain's goal is simply to survive and reproduce. Your mind's goal is to excel, to thrive, to achieve. And it is important that you recognize that there are two distinct thought patterns in your head at all times. Every time you go to do something good, see if you don't hear a voice in the back of your head telling you not to do it. Think about just going to the gym. How many of you have made a commitment? I'm going to start taking care of myself. I'm going to start going to the gym. But you wake up in the morning, you put on your workout gear. Don't you hear voices in your head telling you, oh, it's early. It's going to hurt. It's going to, you know, there's other things you could do. We could start tomorrow. I know you know this is true. It happens to everybody when they try to achieve. Your brain is effort and risk minimizing. Look it up. Don't just trust me. Google it. We have effort and risk minimizing brains. And you have to put out massive effort you got to hustle. It's not just going to a job every day. That's not hustling. I don't care if you're working 60 hours a week. <laughs> That's not hustling. I guess it could, it probably should be better said, you got to have a side hustle. You got to have a second stream of income. If you think your job is going to make you wealthy, you're sadly mistaken. As you've seen, a job is just over broke, J-O-B, just over broke, paycheck to paycheck, you got to have a side hustle. And just buying single family houses is an effective side hustle. Passive investing is an effective side hustle. But even just buying one stinking little rent property you say, Steve, I can't do 
50 or 100,000 in a passive deal. That's too much risk. Okay. How about 20,000 in a single family house? Could you do that? Could you have the courage to do that? Could you hustle? That thing's going to make you about $400 a month or about a, what is that? 4,800 on 20,000 down. That's about a 24% cash on cash rate of return. That is triple what you're making now in the stock market. Triple. It's actually more than triple. And that's just one way that real estate makes you money. That house is also making you equity buildup, appreciation, not to mention that the equity capture which was probably over a hundred percent rate of return. Side hustle. You want to think. Side hustle. What is my second stream of income going to be? Well, if you're like me, <laughs> I like to do what successful people do. So I chose real estate because nine out of 10 millionaires in the U.S used real estate to become so. So, I suggest that you be very cautious in the way that you think. Realize that your brain is effort and risk minimizing. And while that was good for us 10,000 years ago when we were cavemen, it's not good for us now. We're not being chased by tigers. It's, it's a different world now. And our brain has not kept up with it. But our mind has. Luckily, your brain can form a mind. And those thoughts, those are the ones where you thrive. Let's look at that little single family house. You say, oh, I'm, I want a side hustle. Okay. Let's look at what just buying one little single family house does for you. First, the thing is going to make you about $400 a month in positive cash flow. That's after principal, interest, taxes, insurance, maintenance, vacancy. You net about $400 a month. We'll multiply that times 12. That's 4800 a year. Average out of pockets right around 20 grand per house if you know what you're doing. Um, divided by the 20 grand you've got in the deal, that's a 24% rate of return. That's over triple what you're making now in the stock market. When you close the deal, you picked up thirty thousand dollars equity. You bought the house for one seventy. It's worth two hundred. You picked up thirty thousand dollars equity. Divided by the twenty thousand you've got in it, that's a hundred and fifty percent rate of return. Hundred and fifty percent rate of return. Then there's appreciation. Appreciation means real estate goes up in value about 3% a year, doubles in value every 20 years. But that thing is going to give you another 30% rate of return in appreciation. Appreciation. Then you've got principal pay down. Every time your renter pays their rent, you're paying your mortgage, you're reducing what you owe on the property. That's another 20 or 30% rate of return right there. I want you to listen to this number very closely. After the first year, now the first year you make over a 100% rate of return. But every year after your first year, you're making between 30 and 60% rate of return on your money. In the stock market, 7%. What are you doing? <laughs> Why? You don't think you can hustle a little bit? 
take a maintenance call once in a while for a 30 to 60 percent rate of return listen you can jump up and down kick me spit at me call me names if I'm making 30 60 percent rate of return you can do whatever the heck you want just keep paying me my 30 60 percent rate of return and you guys are worried about oh I might get a maintenance call get over it there's no such thing as something for nothing see something for nothing is what the stock market is you guys think you're gonna just throw your money in there and you're gonna get rich that's what you think you're a something for nothing person that's not how it works the stock market is seven percent that barely keeps up with inflation and taxes real estate's 20 percent minimum pretty much and then sometimes 30 60 percent rate of return hustle people listen to your mind ignore your brain who doesn't want to put out any effort or take any risk listen to your mind now when it comes to risk we do need to have that discussion risk is not something you can avoid the brain is out of its mind <laughs> to think that it can avoid risk the reason is everything is risky everything see going to the grocery store is risky you could get rear-ended crippled for life asking that beautiful girl out risky she could embarrass you, turn you down, or she could turn, she, she could say yes and turn out to be a psycho. Um, it's all risky. Everything is risky. Having a baby, getting married, taking a new job, traveling. Everything is risky. You cannot avoid risk. So what you have to do is embrace risk. And your brain doesn't want to do that. Your mind understands it but your brain is pushing back don't take risk don't take risk you've got to take risk you just need to make sure that you're only taking the risks that will take you where you want to go most of you are taking the risk of just having a job as your sole source of income you're risking getting fired getting laid off getting a pay cut having a job is high high risk and I always sadly laugh if there's a if that's a thing but I do love or am astounded I guess is a better word I'm astounded with people with jobs that go oh I'm risk adverse I don't like to take risks what are you talking about you're the risk taker you're the one with the job you're taking massive risk. You have no other income. You lose that job, you're screwed. You're the risk taker. I tell the story all the time, but back in 2008 or 9, one of my students had 20, 30 houses, and people would say, oh, he's taking the risk. He's risky, risky. He's taking the risk. He bought 20, 30 houses. That's risky, okay? He goes to work one day, and they fire everybody at his job, 12 people at that office. He's got 20, 30 rent houses, making eight, 10 grand a month. Does he care if he loses his job? No. All his bills are paid, and then some. So who took the bigger risk? The 11 people with just a job, or my student with the 20, 30 houses? They took the bigger risk. We'll talk more after the break. Thanks for listening. When you put money in the bank or pay your insurance premium, they take that money and go buy real estate with it. Why? Because it gives the highest rate of return and is the lowest risk. This is called passive investing. Due to some recent changes in the laws, you can now invest the exact same way. Total Wealth Academy can show you how. 
Visit TotalWealthAcademy.com and attend our free sample class on real estate investing. That's TotalWealthAcademy.com. Thank you. Welcome back to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I am your host, Steve Davis. Um, the email is open to you. I should give this out at the beginning of the show, and I apologize. I forgot to do it. It's steve at totalwealthacademy.com. Steve at totalwealthacademy.com. You're also welcome to give me a buzz. It's 281-558-5738. 281-558-5738. K-S-E-V. Or again, Steve, email me, steve at totalwealthacademy.com. Now, if you're shy, you feel like you got a dumb question, if you call, just give a fake name. If you email me, put anonymous in the subject line, and I won't use your name. But get those questions to me because you've got to have a side hustle. You must have a side hustle in today's world if you're going to succeed financially today or in retirement. And don't put this off. You 20 and 30 year olds, learn from our mistakes. 95%, you know the map they gave you for success? You're in your 20s, your 30s, you think you're on your path to success? It doesn't work. Saving your way to retirement doesn't work. I saved up five million, ran out of money, at 95 he's 102 and still healthy saving your way to retirement doesn't work that business model is flawed don't put it off do it now Um, 40 is old by the way sorry all you 40 year olds got your feelings hurt but 40 is old 40 is midlife not 55 2 times 40 is 80 Only 1% of Americans live past 80. 40 is middle age, 35 to 40. Don't put it off. All you 20 and 30 year olds, you should be in my classes and preparing yourself to retire in the next 10 years, not the next 35 years. Um, Wow, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, I was talking about emailing me your questions and then I've got a question. Give me just one second to pull up my email. This is from Jolly. Nice name. Jolly's basically asking how I get deals for $20,000 total out of pocket when his bank has quoted him 20% down plus he has to pay all of his closing costs, all of his rehab out of pocket. Jolly, the reason is we don't use Wells Fargo. We don't use Bank of America. We use investor loans. What people don't realize is there are mortgage companies out there that do nothing but work with investors. See, you're going to banks that prefer to deal with owner occupants, people who are buying it to live in. As an investor, you need to go to what's called a hard money lender. And a hard money lender can get you in that same deal. And you describe it here. If your numbers are correct, you, you're sitting on a five or $6,000 down deal. If your ARV after repaired value is correct. Um, this deal using a hard money loan would only be five or $6,000 down. So you need to join a real estate investor club You need to get with these investor mortgage companies and that's how you'll get your down payment down. The reason I say 20 is 20,000 to 25,000 is the average out of pocket. But Jolly, the deal you're sitting on is exemplary. It is a wonderful deal based off of your numbers. You need to take action on that deal and get it under contract today or somebody else will. Somebody else will. Okay, Jolly, hope that helps. And I hope I was encouraging and not negative. Um, Just get with a hard money lender. You can join Total Wealth Academy. We've got seven of them. Seven of them. And they do zero down deals all the time. 
way more than we did two years ago. So, yeah, join up and uh, get that deal because that's a that's a winner deal. And do, <laughs> don't put the address in an email. Um, I'm not, of course, not going to announce it on the radio, but uh, keep that address to yourself. All right. Phone lines are open 281-558-5738, 281-558-KSEV, or email me. It's steve at totalwealthacademy.com, steve at totalwealthacademy.com. Okay, got an anonymous email here. Thank you for the kind words about the show. Um, I appreciate you as much as you appreciate me. I promise you that. Um, Okay, you've left yourself anonymous. Um, I'm not going to mention the company you work for. You've got 400... 700. Okay. You've got over a million dollars between these IRAs and 401ks. Now, why you have it all spread out like that, I don't know. You need to get that consolidated into one, what's called a self-directed IRA. If you have any self-employed income, then use a self-directed 401 But get all that money into one account. It doesn't need to be in one, two, three, four different accounts. And self-direct it. And the answer is yes. You can use that million dollars to invest passively at Total Wealth Academy at a 20% rate of return. That's about $200,000 a year for the rest of your life. It would take you anywhere from six months to two years to do that but yeah that is a huge amount of money in our business two hundred thousand dollars or more is a huge amount of money Um, one of my students he put up a hundred grand into a deal he's now in 12 deals he's got a net worth of 1.7 million and hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year in passive income so, yeah, you're, you're prime to do this. I'm trying to see if there's another question in this email. No. Just more data. But the bottom line is, none of that other stuff matters. None of that other stuff you put in your email, that's inconsequential. You have a million bucks If you get that invested passively at Total Wealth Academy and you're making 200 grand a year, you no longer have to work. Or you can do what most people do, quit the job you don't like and go find a job you love, even if it's less money, but at least you're happy now. Um, You need to get out of that job that you hate because it's bad for you health-wise. There are people who have heart attacks, they end up with diabetes, they end up with cancer, and I am not exaggerating. You can look this up. People who are unhappy are way more susceptible to heart disease, cancer, all types of diseases. So this is important for your health. Um, Come see us, please. Your first step would be to come to the free sample class. Go to TotalWealthAcademy.com and click on the free sample class there. Come to that class and we'll show you exactly what we're talking about. All right. Phone lines are open 281-558-573. Oh, we're at the end of the show. Sorry. Um, Please use my email. Steve at TotalWealthAcademy.com. Steve at TotalWealthAcademy.com. And remember, 
That email is open to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I generally get back to people within an hour. And, and you may hear from me at 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't know why I wake up at 2 o'clock every morning. But uh, I wake up wide awake at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. every day and uh, go do my email. Uh, it's fun and usually gets me relaxed to where I can get back to sleep. So email me. It's steve at totalwealthacademy.com. steve at totalwealthacademy.com. Any of you that are using your mind and want to come to our free sample class, uh, go to totalwealthacademy.com and you can click on the free sample class there. Thanks everybody for listening and have a great rest of your day. You've been listening to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Please remember that this show is for entertainment purposes only and should not be construed as legal, tax, or investing advice. Always get a professional opinion before making any investment decisions. To find out more about coaching and consulting at Total Wealth Academy, visit TotalWealthAcademy.com and attend one of our free sample classes on real estate investing. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.